Hi everyone, welcome to another R tutorial video. Wow, it has been way too long since I've made one of these videos. But uh, let's just go ahead and uh, dump, uh, jump right into it. In this example, uh, it's going to be a little bit different than, uh, definitely different than the earlier videos that I made. In the, those earlier videos that I made, it was a lot more of laying the foundation and giving you the building blocks to get started in the R language. In this video, it's going to be more of a specific uh, problem uh, that I'm going to be trying to solve. Maybe not the most practical problem, but I think it uh, combines a lot of the uh, a lot of what I've shown you in the earlier videos in a in an actual closer to real life example than uh, than simply just showing you how uh, you know. The different pieces in our work. So let's uh, let me uh, let me explain what this problem is here, uh, and I'm going to create a vector first. And I think when uh, the reason I'm doing that is I think it'll be a little bit easier to uh, explain the problem if you see see this vector. So recall this is the way that uh, create a vector of integers. Okay. So the problem I'm trying to solve is I have that vector vector of length five, and I want to find out every additive combo of the numbers that are in that vector. So one of the answers that I want in my answer set would be 24. 11 plus 13, you see those first two entries there, 11 plus 13 is 24. I want 24 to appear in my answer set. Uh, uh, I also want uh, 43 to appear in the answer set. Uh, 11 plus 13 plus 23 is 43. I want that answer to appear. I also want the number 19 to appear. Uh, you know, uh, just one inch, uh, if there's only one, you know, value in that original vector, I want that to appear too. So whether I, you know, just take one number, add three numbers together, add two numbers together, add all five together, I want that to appear in the answer. So that's the, uh, that's the problem I'm trying to solve. Now, rather than explain my entire thought process uh, on how I solve that problem, I'm just going to show you the code on uh, on how I came up with a general solution to solve this problem. Uh, I think by looking through the code, you'll be able to figure out what my thought process was. But this video should be more about the, the code that I'm using to solve the problem rather than how I solve this specific problem. So let's, uh, let me show you the first step that I did. I'm going to create a empty list oops, with this vector command. I'm going to explain what it's doing here in a minute. This uh, vector command, there's several arguments that can go in that first entry. Uh, I personally have really only used this um, with the list argument here. It's going to create uh, an, empty, an empty list. Um, but if you want to read the documentation on, on vector, you're, uh, go ahead and do that and you can you know, create other, uh, other kind of vectors as well. But this is going to create an empty list. And the length of the list is going to be that second argument there. And notice that I uh, that I have length of in vector. I did that instead of typing five, simply because if I change the length of in vector in that line one there, then the rest of the program is automatically going to update, uh, and I don't have to do any work. I can simply try you know lots of vectors of different lengths, and all I have to do is hit the go button, and everything is is going to update automatically. So let me run the second line of code. Uh, oops, i got to run the first line, and then the second line. Okay, so let's take a look at what this matmaker underscore list is. And by the way, matmaker stands for matrix maker. I'm going to use this to create a matrix later. So I've run that matmaker uh, underscore list, and you can see that there's five, uh, there's five elements in there, and they're all null, uh, so it's an empty list. Uh, before I go too much further, let me explain a little bit of what a list is. A list is an extremely flexible data type in R that will hold any kind of object. Uh, let me show you a really simple, trivial example of a list. Let's do 1, comma, x, y, z, comma, uh, let's do, and let me make the first one empty cars, that data frame that we 
that we used previously. So I'm going to run that and look at that output there and I'm going to scroll up a little bit and you see where that first part where it says double bracket one that first element in that list is an entire data frame that in that empty uh, empty cars gets put in that first spot of that list scrolling down see that double bracket two that next item is one it's that second item that I put in that list, and that final item that double with that double bracket three is a character uh, is a you know a string of characters X Y Z. It's that third item that I put in there. So you can see that I have three very different objects, you know, a data frame, an integer, and a, and a string of characters, but they all go into the list. So very flexible data type. You can use it to solve a lot of different problems. But in this case, for this map maker list, I'm going to put uh, several vectors in there. But for, to start off, obviously the list is empty. To populate that list, I'm going to use a for loop. So let me uh, go ahead and type this out and then I'll speak about it a little bit. Now notice that the uh, notation to refer to items in a list is very similar to the notation to, uh, for items in a vector, except that I use double brackets instead of single brackets. That's, that's really the main difference in the notation there. Uh, other than that, it's, it's very similar. So let's look at line three. Uh, this uh, syntax is probably similar to other languages that you've seen. Uh, Obviously, some of the syntax is going to be a little bit different in R compared to other languages. So that first part of that for loop, uh, that part that appears within the parentheses, that's going to tell the for loop what items you're looping over. So there's going to be a dummy variable called i. It's going to start at the number 1, and then it's going to work its way all the way up to the length of n vector. In this particular case, it's 5, but if I change the length of n vector, the, uh, the number of times it's going to loop is going to change. Uh, it's going to change. So you can see that I've built in that flexibility into this part of the code as well. If I change the length of n vector, the for loop is going to change as well. Within those curly uh, braces, uh, and you can see in starting line four, I'm going to be putting a vector uh, of length two into each slot of that mat maker underscore less. And you can see that I have a, a index within there, in the, in the, within the double brackets, is i. So it's, it's going to loop five times, and in slots one through five of this uh, map maker underscore list, it's going to put a vector of length, uh, of length two. Let me just, uh, I know it's a really trivial example. Let me show you what zero colon one will do. You have a vector of length two with zero and one. Okay. So let's run this bit of code, and then look at what the output is, and just confirm that it's, doing what we expect it to do. And there you can see uh, before these five items were null, but you can see for each of the items in that list we have a, a vector 0, 1 uh, in each of those five spots. Okay. Now let's actually make this matrix. And I'm going to use something called the do call function. Before I run do call, uh, do you see that first entry in do call? It's called expand.grid. Let me show you what expand grid does. It's a really simple example, 0 colon 1, 0 colon 1. Actually, let me do uh, different numbers, 5 to 6. So two vectors. I'm going to do expand grid. And look at what that output does. Uh, it creates a... Uh, a a data frame, you know, uh, rows and columns, and what it does is it does a what's called a Cartesian product between the first entry and the second entry. So you could see, uh, you know, reading down that first column, zero one, zero one, it's simply matching every single combination in that first uh, in that first vector with every single combination in that sec second vector. Uh, so zero uh, matches up with five and six. One matches up with five and six shows you every single combination. 
if I made this uh, list a little bit bigger, uh, obviously the list is going to get a little bit bigger uh, and it's uh, just matching up every single combination. So that's what expand grid does. What this do call function does is uh, it's a very, very, very handy function uh, in the right situation. It's going to run that first, the first argument is going to be a function and it's going to run that function and that second item is going to be the entries in that function. So recall that mapmaker underscore list has five items in there. It's going to do a Cartesian product on those five items. So let's run, let's run this line of code and then look at what combo underscore matrix looks like. Or combos, I guess I have. Okay, so let's, uh, that's what the output is. I'm going to scroll up a little bit. And you can see, well, we have five different columns. Makes sense, we have, makes sense because we had five different entries in there. And it's going to show us every single combination uh, of zeros and ones for those, uh, for those five columns. Okay. Now, for matrix, multi I eventually want to multiply this uh, with uh, my original n vector. Um, if you recall from matrix multiplication or if you need a refresher and, you know, look a line or whatever, uh, this isn't quite turned the right way. To do matrix multiplication, I have to transpose a matrix. There's a really simple function to transpose in R, and that's just T. T stands for transpose. I'm going to do that and just look at what the uh, output looks like real quick to verify that it was transposed, and indeed it was. Now I'm going to perform the matrix multiplication that I mentioned before. I'm going to multiply in vector by, and I'll explain this funky notation here in a minute. Now this weird symbol here where I have percent, asterisk, percent, that's the symbol in R for matrix multiplication as opposed to standard multiplication. If you took two lists and you just had the regular multiplication symbol, it'll go item by item and multiply each of those uh, uh, items together. Uh, like, uh, let me show you a really quick example. 2, 3 times 4, 5. And if I did that, it would, the output is 8, 15, and the reasoning is that 2 times 4 is 8, 3 times 5 is 15. So it's matching up each of the items and multiplying them together. Now in this particular case, for this particular problem, I actually want matrix multiplication, so I have to use a slightly different, uh, slightly different notation there. If you want to look at the documentation on matrix multiplication, you normally what you would do is you put question mark and put the word in there. Because you have the strange symbols there, you can't do that. I'll show. You, I'll just uh, let you know that it's uh, mat mult. And if you look at the documentation for mat mult, it'll explain matrix multiplication in a little bit more detail as it's as it's done in R. Okay. So now we have the answer, and you know, depending on what kind of problem you're trying to solve, let's just say for this example, I wanted to, you, the unique answers, and I wanted to sort everything. So I have unique sort answer. Oops. Uh, oh, I haven't created an answer yet, so let's run that, create an answer, and uh, those are all the possible entries. So let's, uh, I'm going to print the original vector here. And looking at our original vector, that first entry is, is kind of a trivial case, you know, I don't take any of the numbers and the, you know, the result is going to be zero. I have 1, 13, 17, 20, you know, 23, you know, where I only take one entry in there. And then I start looking and I see 24, you know, that's going to be 11, 11 plus 13. If I go all the way to the right-hand side and I add all the five numbers together, you know, the result is going to be 83. So the results seem reasonable. Uh, so this, this is, you know, a real quick example of a practical example. Uh, without going too much detail in the methodology, the reason I'm doing matrix multiplication here is uh, I scrolled up and I'm looking at combos matrix, uh, combos matrix in a little bit more detail. When I take a vector and I multiply it by each of the columns that I created in here, uh, when you see the zeros and one in there, uh, you can think of those as on and off switches. Uh, if there's a one in that particular column, then I'm going to add that number to, you know, I want that number to appear in my result. If it's a zero, then I'm going to ignore that entry. 
So, you know, recall when I did that Cartesian product and I created all these different combinations, I was really creating a matrix that showed every single combination. So that's that's a little bit more detail on, on what this program is actually doing and, and why it uh, helps us arrive at the right answer. Uh, but anyway, I think this video is getting a little bit long, so I'm going to stop there for now. Uh, hopefully I'll make a lot more videos uh, in the future. Uh, I've been really bad on that. I'll try and get better on that. And I'll, hopefully I'll see you guys next time.